Hey everybody! Thanks for joining us uh, for our week or weekly quick tech takes. Uh, it's Mason Day here uh, and Dan Gillespie with J.R. Peters, and uh, you know we have decided to do this series just to fill you in on some of the cool tech things that we're seeing out and about, and uh, give you the information you need. So without any more uh, further ado, let's jump into it, Dan. Right on, Mason. Happy to be here. Sweet. So Dan, uh, this week I kind of want to focus on nutrient schedules. Um, you know, as we look out at the the nutrition world, there's a lot of nu nutrient companies and there's a lot of nutrition schedules out there, and each company's schedule is different. Um, some you know have it by weeks, some have it by days. Uh, so how does how do we do things differently here at Jax, and how do we think about and develop our nutrition schedules? Yeah, great question, Mason. So as you said, there are a lot of different schedules and a lot of different um, thought processes that go into creating those schedules. Um, here at Jax, we understand that every grower's situation is going to be a little bit different, which needs to be accounted for. But we can almost always begin by be, uh, building out our nutrition schedules and our nutrition programs by analyzing a location source water, the crop species nutrient requirements and the growth stage and how the nutrient demand of that species will change as we transition the crop throughout different growth stages. So I've heard, you know, from my time here at Jax that we put a lot of emphasis on source water when uh, developing a nutrition schedule. Why is that? Yeah, so we definitely do put a lot of emphasis on the source water analysis here at Jax, and that is because it is critical in building out a nutrition program. So having a detailed water analysis, it's going to tell you what the pH of your water is, the alkalinity, the nutrition concentration of that water, and it's also going to tell you if there are any harmful ions present in the water, such as sodium and chloride. So once we analyze this information, it allows us to select fertilizer formulas that will properly balance the nutrition concentration of the solution, the EC, the electrical conductivity, and the pH of the solution. So having a laboratory on site at our headquarters in Allentown, Pennsylvania, it allows us to provide this information to our growers and really work with the growers to ensure they're selecting the correct fertilizer formulas for their specific scenario. Awesome. You know, uh, <laughs> I've seen a lot of different people doing a lot of different things when it comes to water sources. Uh, you know, whether you're using reverse osmosis, trying to get things as pure as possible or dipping a bucket into a pond. Uh, I can only imagine water quality must change quite a bit depending on the source and location, even, you know, different areas of the country. Uh, you know, and that's where I'm sure that our J.R. Peters laboratory provides some valuable data on what's happening in that water. Uh, you also mentioned the crop species and growth stage. Um, can you explain that a little more? Obviously, you know, I know crop species, different plants require different nutrients, but, uh, you know, more so about growth stages and, and in those crops in particular, how do we take a look at those nutrition schedules for those things? Of course, you're exactly right, Mason. So once we determine our source water quality and analyze the quality of the source water, we need to consider the nutritional requirements of the species or of the crop that we are going to be growing. And we also need to consider if these nutritional requirements or the nutrient demand of this crop will change throughout a cropping cycle or throughout different growth stages. So each species will obviously have slightly different nutrient requirements. And this nutrient demand will shift as we transition a crop from propagative growth to vegetative growth, and then finally, in many cases, reproductive growth. So in order to achieve high yields and high quality, we need to account for these crop specific or these species specific nutrient requirements, but we also need to account for the changing nutrient demand as we transition crop to different growth stages. I gotcha. Understandable, understandable. You know, different plants out there when you're trying to talk about flowering plants or just plants that, you know, like lettuce where you don't want it to flower. Uh, those are two very different things and require different nutrients. So I, I'm with you. I'm on board there. Uh, makes a lot of sense. So once we account for these factors, um, how do how do we at Jax put all this information together to create that schedule, right? That that's something that we yep. can hand over to a grower and say, mm -hmm. hey, let's rock and roll. Uh, how how does that kind of finish out the process? 
Sure. So once we've analyzed our source water quality, you know, we see what we're starting with, what's our pH or alkalinity, et cetera. Once we've looked at our source water quality, we determine the species specific nutrient requirements and how this nutrient demand will change throughout a cropping cycle. We can now select fertilizer formulas that will hit these crop specific nutrient targets for each particular growth stage of a crop, allowing us to build out that nutritional schedule that you just referred to. Sweet, man. Well, it sounds like, you know, the nutrient schedule is one of the key components uh, really to, you know, a a good crop in anything that you're growing. Um, so, you know, Dan, where can people find out about, you know, how to get started on this process? Sure. So as we said, you know, every grower situation is going to be a little bit different, but we do have a variety of growth schedules uh, built out. Uh, for different scenarios and different applications available on our website at jacksnutrients.com. Sweet. All right. Well, hey, Dan, thanks for joining me today. And, uh, you know, like Dan and I were talking about, it is important to have a great nutrition schedule uh, just so you know what you're, you know, you and your growers know what they should be doing, when they should be doing it, and know, you know, therefore, when things start to miss targets, what's going on. Um, and as Dan mentioned, water quality, you know, a water an initial water source test is very important to understand what's going on. And you can also uh, request a test kit for those on our website uh, at www.jrpeters.com. And so, yeah, without that, Dan, thanks for hanging out with me this week. Can't wait to talk to you next week and see what we can come up with. All right, everybody. Take it easy. Happy holidays.